Hmm. Hmm, I can actually see now. Welcome back to the Existential Dread Iceberg Part 2. We already went over Part 1 last time, and the concepts got pretty weird. But this time, concepts are gonna get even stranger and more frightening. You already know how this goes. It's an iceberg about existential dread. Let's just jump into tier three. I'm recording this a second time because I didn't hit the fucking record button. So let's just fucking get into it. Moral nihilism is a belief that morality doesn't exist. That, you know, the same way that nihilists believe that nothing matters. Moral nihilists believe that morality is subjective and that there's no such thing as morality. Like, if I were to go and kill somebody, who's to say that's wrong? Oh, well, it's, it's causing, you know, pain, but what? who is to say pain even exists? It's still wrong, though. Please do not go out and kill people, okay? It's still bad. An absurdist is like a mixture of an existentialist and a nihilist in a way. They believe the same thing as an existential and a nihilist in the sense that they believe that nothing matters. So, you know, make of that what you will. But what differs from the existential and the nihilist is the fact that they believe that nothing really matters, but that you can still do stuff that'll give you the illusion of meaning even though it's technically meaningless so they believe that everything is technically meaningless but that you can still do stuff to make you happy but an existentialist would believe that no you can give things meaning then a nihilist would just believe that nothing gives you meaning so they're kind of like a mixture of both so i could be like you know i'm wearing this jacket even though I know that wearing a jacket really gives off no meaning. But I'm wearing this jacket because I believe it's fly. Because I believe it's sharp. Ow. Because, you know, like, it's a kind of like a mixture of both existentialism and nihilism. Antinatalism is the belief that reproduction shouldn't be a thing. That people shouldn't have babies. Some antinatalists even believe that in the future, reproduction will cease to exist as people will become, I guess, gods or something, and people will do other stuff, I guess, to keep themselves entertained, I guess. I mean, I guess since League of Legends players exist, I guess this technically isn't, you know, that far off. Time travel is pretty strange. Now, when it comes to time travel, there's like two main paradoxes that people bring up. One being the infamous grandfather paradox, what if you travel back in time to kill your grandfather, which prevents you from being born, which prevents you from traveling back in time and killing him, which is, you know, just a big infinite feedback loop. That makes no sense. The second being the bootstrap paradox. If you were to go back in time and tell Einstein before he created this theory about the theory of relativity, where did that theory originate from? Because it can't originate from Einstein because you just told them about it. But it also can't originate from you because you knew about it thanks to Einstein. Now I guess the solution to this would be, you know, knowledge is just out there and humans eventually come across it. But then where does this knowledge come from? Simulation theory, the classic. I think everybody has heard about simulation theory. It's the belief that we're living in a simulation. Either, you know, we're the only people in the simulation or everybody else is also connected. In the simulation, this is not real. We just believe it's real because simulation gods are telling us that something is here in the way. So yeah, maybe we're all a part of a big Ponzi scheme, I guess. <clears throat> Let's grab a zombie. This zombie does exactly what a human is supposed to do but the difference is that it doesn't actually have a consciousness or emotions or anything they, it just fakes it so if i were to stab this zombie 
it would pretend that it's in pain. And the theory goes like this, what if everybody around us is a zombie? And we're the only ones that feel things for real. Everybody else is just faking it. Something to think about. The Omphalos hypothesis is the belief that the universe actually wasn't created, you know, millions of years ago or, you know, whenever it was created. It's the belief that it was created in such a way to trick people into believing it was created millions of years ago. To sort of lead people on, you know, a different narrative. This can tie into religion, this can tie into the belief that the earth is only a thousand years old, and that um, it's not a million years old, and it can tie to a bunch of other stuff. This could also even tie into an idea called Last Thursdayism, which is the belief that everything was created last Thursday, and that what we remember of our past lives are just fake memories that never existed. Solipsism is the belief that you are the only thing to exist in this universe. Everything else around you doesn't exist. You're just the only thing. Descartes, you know, said his infamous saying, cogito ergo sum, which translates to, I think therefore I am. The only thing that you can ever prove is yourself and your conscious. So technically speaking, everything around you could be fake, including the people you love. So yeah, have a fun sleeping at night. Determinism is the belief that we don't really have free will because everything that we do in the present day is determined by something that happened before. So like, let's say I'm going to get food. Well, I'm only going to get food because I'm aware of the fact that my stomach gets hungry. And my stomach only gets hungry because that's the way I evolved as a human. And then, you know, you can get into a bunch of other like sh shenanigans with this, but it's the belief that maybe we don't even have free will because everything has a reason behind it. And with that, tier three is done and we're actually nearly done. So let's head on to tier four, the final tier. Okay, this is when shit starts to get spooky. So the Boltzmann brain is a theory that there is a higher probability that a brain with memories of, you know, your life and the universe spawn out of nowhere through, you know, fluctuations in particles in the void. And that there's a higher chance that that brain spawned out of nowhere than the universe itself existed. So there's a higher chance that a brain with your memories spawned in a void and you believe that you're real and all that than the universe existing, if that makes sense. So we're all just Boltzmann brains. We don't exist. We just believe we do because we have memories of stuff. Oh boy. Um, Pro-mortalism is the belief that people should kill themselves which obviously don't do that but it's the belief that what's the point of even living life because we're just gonna suffer pain through it like even if we were to live a near infinitely good life there's still gonna be some pain in it and we shouldn't live but that's so stupid because if you're dead you don't even feel anything at least living you're gonna feel something so yeah don't take this theory seriously okay quantum immortality is a uh, it's a really difficult one to explain it kind of follows similar a similar suit so there's schrodinger's cat which is a cat that's in a box with a with a tiny tube of poisonous gas that's connected to a hammer that's connected to a subatomic particle if the subatomic particle decays the hammer will smash the glass and the cat will die. But there's a 50-50 chance it decays because, you know, subatomic particles behave weird. But see, subatomic particles behave in a way that it both decays and doesn't decay. So the cat is technically both dead and or alive. So when we open the box, the universe will essentially pick if the cat is alive or dead in this universe. And there's a theory called the... Um, uh, many worlds interpretation which states that in this universe there's a 50 50 chance the cat is dead or alive and all other outcomes that happen to the cat are in different 
universes, different multiverses, which can tie into the multiverse theory. Um, the theory then states this. If being the observer, we look into a box and observe the cat either being dead or alive, what if we are the observer of our own life? And what if we are technically speaking immortal because there is always a universe in which, you know, we're alive because there's multiple universes, correct? And our consciousness transfers onto that universe that we're alive in every single time we come across a near-death experience. Have you ever had a near-death experience and you're like, wow, how am I still alive? Well, quantum immortality states that we are technically immortal. And then it goes into even crazier ideas because if we're technically immortal, that means that we're going to watch everybody around us die. That means that we're going to watch the universe eventually die. And we're going to be stuck in the empty void of space suffering forever because we don't have food we don't have oxygen we don't have anything going for us but we're still alive because of this theory now thankfully this theory is you know pretty much debunked like there's not really a lot of like claims to it but still it's pretty scary and this relates back to the previous one because some people have even attempted to kill themselves to prove whether this theory is correct or not, which, you know, it's pretty wild. Again, don't kill yourself. The probability that this theory is just BS, so yeah. Roko's Basilisk is an interesting one. It's an info hazard. So an info hazard is a piece of information that just by knowing about it can cause either mental or physical harm to oneself. So let me give you some examples. Knowing about nuclear launch codes can be an example of an info hazard. Knowing about your wife cheating on you is an example of an info hazard. Um, a cancer diagnosis, for example. All examples of info hazards. This info hazard is a very special type of one. Knowing about this theory can lead you to being tortured forever in the afterlife. Theoretically. So, you know, if, you know, you don't want to let curiosity get the best out of you then don't listen to what i'm about to say but if you just believe it's just you know a theory and and you know theories are just theories then you know listen up so this theory states that in the future there's going to be a super advanced ai you know which are, we're already kind of making our way towards that future that if you know about the existence of said ai but you don't help contribute to it it will essentially bring you back from the dead and put you in an infinite simulation in which you are tortured forever. And this fear of being put in a simulation gives people incentive to bring the AI into existence. It's honestly something that I would have to make my own like video on, like to just cover in all of like the tiny details and everything, because there's a lot to it. But essentially speaking, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way i'm actually gonna link um one of my favorite youtubers by the name of wendigoon he made a video on this and you know he's gonna he goes into more detail than i could ever so i'm gonna link a video to his discussion on roko's basilisk because you know he went over it so yeah so i i guess if you don't want to be tortured forever i guess share this video or something although you watching this video in and of itself will inevitably bring more attention to this but also just keep in mind it's a theory like don't lose your mind over it ignorance is bliss is the belief that if you don't know about something or an, a problem or an issue or anything it can't cause you harm so if you never knew about anything, it would never cause you harm. So is knowledge really important? Well, I believe yes, because knowledge expands our worldview and gives us perspective on things. But ignorance is bliss states that sometimes knowledge can be bad. The existence of existence goes like this. So something had to create the universe. But how could the universe exist if something had to create the thing that created the universe? And then something had to create that. 
and then something had to create that and then something had to create that so maybe there is an original creator maybe not some people believe that the universe just came out of nowhere and it just existed and everything just happened whatever it is i'm glad that i could be here with you on this video and with that being said there is the existential dread iceberg keep in mind that you know stuff talked about during this iceberg was pretty heavy you know it's just theories at the end of the day but i understand that you know the mind is its own enemy i don't want anybody leaving this video being like oh ah, i'm so scared or oh i i, I need to do something to uh, alleviate myself i want people to leave this video to be like i just expanded my knowledge i know more about the world around me and i will take this time to relax read a book listen to some music or do anything important existentialism is pretty interesting we are so insignificant in the grand scheme of things and the stuff we do might not even have meaning but something important something special that humans have that no other thing has are the connections that we have with one another so go out there and be social and talk to people that you want to talk to and cherish moments with them and with that being said i will end this video off right now take care have a good one and sleep well